What's up guys, this is Taking the Field with Stevie Mac, episode 45. I'm your host, Stephen MacDonald, and today is PLL Day. It is the two-year anniversary of the birth of the PLL. So today, let's look back at some of the memorable moments of the last two years. Starting in 2019, I gotta go with the collegiate draft here, the production from the NBC Sports Studios was fantastic, and a lot of those players are now well-known PLL stars that were taken in that draft. Names like Connor Farrell, Cade Van Raphorst, Brad Smith, Tim Troutner, just to name a few guys. You can go back and look at that draft class. There are so many names that were taken in that draft that are now huge in the PLL today. Then we got to fast forward to the opening game and really the opening weekend in general. If you go back and think about it, the first PLL goal was scored on the opening faceoff in game number one. And I think we all know where we were when that happened. And if you remember game one and two that weekend went into overtime on the very first day of the PLL action in 2019. And I know for me as an Atlas fan, I remember two games from 2019. 19 in particular first is week eight against the Redwoods where in the first half the Atlas really showed what they could have been getting up on that big lead early on and then taking that lead into the half but then in the second half I think they really showed the kind of team that they were for most of 2019 and a team that I've talked about here a lot in 2020 as well and then you look at week number 11 against the Chaos back in 2019 in front of a Chaos crowd where the game was played at Albany. And, uh, and, you know, obviously there's a lot of Albany influence on that Chaos roster. The Atlas needed a win in the realest of ways in that game. And they got it done by a 12 to 9 decision in that one to really help their chances of making the playoffs. Obviously that didn't end up being the case, but they needed to win that one to at least give themselves a chance and they were able to pull it out that was a fun game for me as an atlas fan to watch and it's a game that to this day i still remember very much then we fast forward to the championship game of 2019 and the call by brennan burke in overtime on matt rambo's goal to seal it lives in our heads to this very day and then finally, my last point of 2019 was the news of expansion following that championship game. So we knew that there would be a cl new club in 2020, but we didn't know who they were, what they would look like, who would coach them, or who your favorite team would really try to protect in that expansion draft. So these were questions that we all had going into 2020, but we were all just excited that there was going to be an expansion team in 2020. So now we move ahead into 2020 and we now have the news of expansion. The Water Dogs become the seventh lacrosse club. Andy Copeland's going to coach them and the Whip Snakes lost the most players to expansion in that expansion draft. That's something to keep in mind here as we move along later on in this episode. But then we move ahead into March and April with the news of COVID here in America. And we really all wondered, would there even be a PLL season that summer? And the answer was yes in a big way. As in May, we got news of the championship series and collegiate draft. And then a little later on, we found out about sports betting and fantasy lacrosse. And all these things happened about within a two-month span of each other, it seemed like. And so a lot of different things going on in the world of Premier Lacrosse and thus the new format of this podcast was born from all of that. So now we move ahead to the championship series where Matt Gaudette's laugh now basically lives rent free in all of our heads as he chirped Blaze Reardon in their first game of the championship series. And another thing for me as an Eastern time time zone, or excuse me, here in Michigan, I remember staying up until about 1 a.m. to watch some of those overtime games from Salt Lake City. And I can assure you, I do not regret a single second of doing so. Now, Jonathan Ellis on Twitter commented saying that his moment was, quote, less of a moment and more a saga of sorts, but hashtag Chromeback 2020 is definitely up there. And I would have to agree with this because 
Tim Sudan did such an amazing job with this team here in 2020, given all the circumstances that he had to work with with this club and things going on with COVID and all that. He did a fantastic job taking a team that won all of two games in 2019 and got them to a 60% winning percentage here in 2020. Now, 3-2 and two isn't necessarily anything to write home about, but he actually got them to a point where they could have been the most improved club from 2019 to 2020. And I think you can see that in the fact that when we did that PLL coach power ranking show a few months ago, most of you guys had him within the top three or four of your list going into that episode. So obviously you guys were very high on uh, Tim Sudan after the way he coached this team in 2020. And then finally with the championship game of the championship series, this was an interesting game because it was the first place team versus the last place team, the Whip Snakes versus the Chaos, and Zed Williams really took over in that second half. And the Whip Snakes basically, in my mind, became the Patriots of Pro Field Lacrosse, and I tweeted that out after the conclusion of the game that day. And I think Jim Stagnita kind of cemented himself as the Bill Belichick of pro lacrosse with what he was able to do with this team from 2019 to 2020. I mean, like I said earlier, the Whipsnakes lost the most players to expansion in that February expansion draft, and they somehow found a way to make their team better in almost every statistical category between 2019 and 2020 on their way to winning back-to-back -back championships to start out the first few years here in the PLL. So that's the first two years of the Premier Lacrosse League, and here's to many more in the PLL. And I think that if 2021 is anything like we saw in the first two years here, I don't think we'll be disappointed with what the future holds for this league and this sport in general, especially at the professional level. So that'll do it for me, guys, on episode 45. Make sure to like, comment, and share on this post. Let me know some of the memories you guys have from the past two years of the PLL as well. You can check out all past episodes of the podcast on YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, Anchor, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, anywhere you guys get your podcasts. We are pretty much there now, but that'll do it for me, guys. I'll talk to you later.